Hello and welcome to the March 2014 edition of the TetraCast, RPG Sites monthly podcast. Joining us this month is David Kreinberg. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's going on? Yeah. What's going on? I guess talking like girls. Oh, okay. It's fine. I'm very comfortable with my sexuality. Adam Dutali. Hey, oh. how's it going? It's going pretty well. Lots of RPGs this month. Yeah. Oh, plenty to talk about, too. Let's ignore everything that happened before this conversation. And then, of course, Simon Chun. I'm back from the past. Or wait. Back from the dead. Yeah, back from the dead. That's what I meant to say. Back from the parties. I'm, okay, it was, I was not partying. I was out doing work-related stuff. And I was work related stuff parties. with friends at bars. I was networking. Bar networking. hopping. Oh, my gosh. I had met like, a bunch of people from Intel, like... Um, hey, name Dell, Dell HP. But was, cool. Anyway, it was Tell really cool. Give me a job. Dell actually, um, <laughs> Dell actually um, gave me an Xbox One. Because they just scoured gave him because no, well, I won a, a prize. I won something. I was playing Fruit Ninja, and I had the highest score on Fruit Ninja out of the entire company, and so they gave me an Xbox One. That's weird. What? That's yeah. Well, they gave one to a girl, and one gave to a guy. Uh, the, the company? Enough, they gave it both to Asians. Lol. How many? How many people? Well, how many people are actually in your company? Uh, I want to say like. 500, 800? I forget. A lot of people. They all played Fruit Ninja and you best at it? Yeah, well, there were a lot of people who played it and there were a lot of people who didn't play it, so I don't know. I mean, it varies. So, do you Congrats. play a ton of the Fruit Ninja then? I've never... I, I, never I, played it. So on my first try, I did sort of poorly. Uh, I had the high score, but I had the, I had beaten the previous score by one point. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not really happy with the score. So I came back and I figured out how to exactly play it, and I ended up beating my own score by like 300 something plus points, and I won it. Anyway, the point is, I won an Xbox One, so I played Xbox One. Cool. That's great. Played your Xbox One. I have my PlayStation 4, it's been gathering dust. I also have my PS4, which is also gathering dust. I have my Wii U, yeah. which is Wii U. Well, it fucked it you. <laughs> it's it's kind of gathering dust until May. That's <laughs> pretty much what you got. Nah, are you, not, are you playing Donkey Kong? Kong? I'm not playing Donkey Kong. I'll well, there you go. Then what do you have? You pl- pl- okay, unless you're back Super Mario 3D World at least, right? Right. Oh, of course I had that. Oh, okay. I, yeah. was, no, he's he's good. played. I, I bet one thing is that he's basically just been using it as a Game Boy or something. He's just playing old games on it. Actually, I haven't been playing it since like November or December you're, or January, one of those months. I, I 100%ed Mario, so that took a while. But after that, I'm just waiting for May, I think. What's or yeah, May? Kong, whenever I get that. Mario Kart is coming out in May. Yeah, Mario. Oh, right. That's probably called but metric butt tons. You're a butt. No, I'm, I'm being serious. It's, it'll probably sell metric butt tons. Like, yeah, I know. Well, I hope so because I this, this, I this don't want the thing. you to die because I don't oh, want it should Nintendo die. To die. What? <laughs> Stuff should die. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Nintendo's dying. Yeah. All right. So we're going off topic in record time. No, it's, it's great. We did fine. So <laughs> of course, I just want to bring up the fact that February was actually pretty big for RPGs. Yep. So there was a lot to talk about. There's been a lot of news, a lot of announcements of games coming to the West. Some reveals about some of the biggest new entries and series coming here, too. Or actually, I should say, just getting released at all. But, of course, what we want to bring it down to is some of the games that got released in February. And so for that, the first title I'd like to talk about is, of course, Bravely Default. A huge title for the handled platforms, I should say. But it's also probably the biggest release in February. <laughs> what is it? Well, it's, that's... Uh, well, it's, yeah. either, it's kind of funny how that's even a thought with Final Fantasy releasing in the same month. Yeah, that's, <laughs> well, I was kind of laughing about it. But. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, I forgot that game came out. Damn. Lightning Returns is probably going to sell more. No. What? Oh. Uh, maybe. No, yeah, I actually. No, it's, they're yeah, both no. kind of super niche, but Final no, Fantasy's got the no, whole. But anyway, it's... Uh, for me, it's that I, I fully intend to get Lightning Returns. I just haven't beaten the first two yet. You so mean you haven't returned it yet? Shit. I haven't returned to Lightning Returns. So, so oh, you, bad jokes aside, yeah. let's get out, out, out of those systems first. Yeah, I Bravely mean, Default. Yeah, you guys got to play it. I think everyone here has played it except for me. So yeah. Suck it. You're hey. missing out on the best game this year so far. I just bought a 3DS a couple weeks ago, so I don't have much. Oh, wait, did you oh, register it. already yet? Uh, yesterday I did. Oh, good. So you got Pokemon. What, I, I'm going to be getting Pokemon. I hope Yay. so. Nice. That's the free the free game that you get if you register a Pokemon. Excuse me, a 3ds and uh, one of the select games they had. Yeah. But of course, you guys, yeah. Um, Bravely Default. It's- Bravely Default finally came to the United States. And so, what did you guys think about that? Yeah, it's been a couple. It's been a couple years since that game 
came out in Japan, and then it was released late fall last year in Europe, and so now we get it. So what do you guys think? I love it. It's a great game. It's an excellent game. It's my favorite game this year. I love it. It's I'm biased, though, because I love Final Fantasy V, and I think Final Fantasy V has the best combat system out of all the Final Fantasies. I think. I'm trying to think, like you mean the job system because the, the combat job, system is I insane. Mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, like, it depends on how you categorize what's part of the battle system and what's yeah, all exactly, ATV. So, like, back, back then, like the battle system really was like just turn based, really. So, I mean, the only significant changes between the, each of the iterations is how how, how you, uh, you went about customizing yeah, each outside battle. Like, yeah, so I guess okay, fine. You want to say the job and stuff? Yeah, so. The job system in FF5 is the the best out of all the Final Fantasy games. So you can y'all can shoot me for all I care. And I like tactics. I like materia. Uh, I'm at, I'm at, I'll, I'll do the mainline time. Uh, Ten title. two. I don't know. Might give it a run. Ten changing. Oh yeah. Ten two's got a in battle, yeah. It's, changing it's, in battle and all yeah. that. Okay, Everything anything? aside from that, the the that that costume system was actually pretty cool. Yes. And we'll talk about that more, I assume, when that when those uh, remakes yeah, back come out. It's coming out in a few weeks. But anyway, yeah, back to briefly. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, I played just like what Simon was saying. Like I actually played through Final Fantasy V on the Game Boy Advance just last year for the first time, nice. and you know I've seen a bunch of praise for you know its its job system and everything. Yeah. And yeah. I enjoyed it. I think a lot more than I expected, and. I, it's kind of, and there's a lot of parallels between that and Bravely Default. One of the things being is, uh, whenever you have a job system like that, it sometimes you can find like combinations that seem kind of overpowered and in a sense, <laughs> yeah. Well, in a sense, they almost feel like they're breaking the game. But and I don't think that's really a negative though. It's kind of fun to find these combinations where you can just like steamroll certain encounters or enemies. Uh, so it, it, it's kind of that's part of the fun is kind of just tinkering around with your with your main class and your subclass and your equipment and finding and, and of course your combination of four of those and basically kind of putting together a party that can you know kick ass and and bravely faults much the same like there are a couple of classes that just seem not as useful as others and like for example like the, or like the the ninja class seems like ex- ex- exceptionally useful. So I guess what I'm saying here is that sometimes there might be like uh, there might be an argument that the balance is a little bit out of whack, but I think that's also part of the fun is kind of coming up with these these class and job yeah. combinations. And that's I, I, I found with, that the ninja class. It's, sorry to cut you off. I found that in the ninja class, in every single Final Fantasy game that has a ninja class, it's always one of the most powerful. You talk like five, you talk Final Fantasy eleven, you talk tactics. Like any of those games, the ninja class is always super powerful, and it's like that's that's the coolest thing I like to hear about is that it's that those types of classes are provide the power. But I'm sorry, uh, keep going. Well, all, all I was going to say is that F- Bravely Default feels like a very natural progression from Final Fantasy V's job system. It, it pretty much it's improves like on it. It's yeah, like it pretty much improves on it in every way. Uh, you get to use basically all the abilities from your main class and from a subclass, and then you get to equip basically passive abilities from any other class. Yeah. Uh, so there's kind of like three different sets you can have. Uh, it's layer and, upon layers of customization of stuff that you've previously learned of your mm-hmm. other jobs, even more so than five, which makes it that much more deep. Yeah, and, you know, that's, it's just... It's, I actually I love tinkering and playing around and experimenting with things, and it's, it's like the perfect type of game for that because uh, there's lots of different ways you can set, you can set up uh, your... your uh, your characters, so it's it's perfect for experimentalists. It's also for good for like multiple playthroughs because you're like, oh, I used this combination the first time. Uh, I mean, granted, you can master the entire uh, all the jobs in the game in one playthrough, but like uh, one of the uh, replayability. Unique, yeah, for, but like Bravely Default and uh, in, in essence, uh, Final Fantasy V as well has really good replayability. I mean, they have. Oh shoot, I forget what it's called. I forget every single time. It's like the Fiesta Five. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Fiesta. <laughs> the, the Fiesta 5 where you get to have, like, a random job assigned to you. You have to use that until you get the next set of jobs, and you keep rolling through it. And, you like, you pretty much do, like, each playthrough of a different combination of jobs that you, you know, use. Lock yourself out of other ones. So it makes it challenging, but at the same time, you know, it's rewarding. And there's a lot of replay value into choosing a certain combination of jobs. Yeah, and I, and I assume you can also pull in um, challenges that people can kind of come up with, like say, have a group that's full of white mages, or like everyone's got to be low level, or like it's it's things like that. That I think that's what I came back to play a lot of the mainline Final Fantasy games again. Like I did the low level challenge in seven, eight, nine, and ten, 
I, I did that. And so it's, it's one of those types of things that you, if you want to, you could come up with these cool ideas or at least, you know, interesting ideas to play the game again and just kind of offer something fresh if you yeah. try to challenge yourself at that. There's something about Bravely Default I want to talk about that I think a lot of people kind of, like, ignore. This is the first, like, mainstream-ish game in a while that had ran- has random encounters. That's not mm-hmm. true. Well, you can you can adjust them. Yeah, I know. Which That's is the first like, time. But yeah. Uh, but, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, like, I wouldn't really call, like, Final Fantasy, I mean, Bravely Default mainstream, though. Like, mainstream-ish. Which, mainstream-ish? Okay, it, so... It's something... It's it, something that, that, uh, it's, it's targeting more the mainstream than Four Years of Light did. That's yeah. I, I, I think Bravely Fall has definitely gotten some attention outside of just, like, the people who play RPGs only. Yeah, and it's also well-received, which you don't see often with random encounter stuff. Well, one yeah, of the I previous think, five you know, Cooney, JRPGs you know, are shit. You no, know. Cooney is not random encounters. Yeah, but it's got the, uh, oh, what, what was oh, I going oh, with that? Uh, I don't know where I was going with oh, that. Oh, I think you're saying it's got more of a wide, wider appeal, maybe, because of some certain elements. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Really? Just, uh, I don't a, think a lot more people are talking about it outside of just the normal group. This so is, a lot of people. Are talking about. default is like the stereotypical JRPG that follows like almost every single anime trope out there. In the world. I mean, well, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the story or the narrative. I'm yeah, talking like, about like I think you know Final Fantasy used to be a huge, huge brand, and I I think it's without question that it's definitely is diminished. So I, there has been some, you know. There has been some like media narrative saying like, "Oh, Bravely Default is a return to form in a sense." Oh, so like, yeah. nostalgia, you're saying it's like a nostalgia juice. Yes, it's kind of like, "Hey, remember those classic Final Fantasy games you liked? Well, here's a game that's basically like it. that." It's, it's <laughs> because you can kind of point at Final Fantasy to say, "Hey, you guys have been weighed down by all this pressure and all these all these expectations yeah. and things like that." What they can do is like they can work with. Uh, companies like Silicon Studios and say, hey, uh, we'll, we'll give you these assets and things like that. Try to create something that, well, I mean, obviously they were inspired to make something like that too. Otherwise, they would have just gone back and made Final Fantasy The Four Heroes of Light 2 or something. Yeah. But this is something that they could say, hey, um, we took this cool combat, this cool job system for Final Fantasy V that a lot of people liked and then tried to... Um, be a little more traditional, go back to the roots. But yeah, I would hope yeah. that from what you guys played, that it's not it's not going too traditional. No, actually, the, like that's the thing I was going to say. It feels like it's trying to streamline traditional stuff. Like like the perfect example is the uh, like the really spider with the random encounters. That streamlining stuff where you could you can explore any dungeon to your heart's content if you don't want to don't want to have to deal with those pesky encounters. Or you fight the boss in the dungeon, and then you have to find your way out again. Like, I don't want to fight more. Yeah. No. yeah you're, oh, yeah, that's always, like, the bane of your, like, fuck. I just like, Or, like, you're almost dead. You have no items. You're like, fuck. Yeah. Now, now yeah, I'm, like, going to have to run every single time. I hope I don't get killed. Better use your rope or something to <laughs> escape the dungeon. I mean, granted, you have those items. Those items are available. It's just, you know, uh, yeah. it, it, they have aspects of it. But I would say that's the only streamlining aspect of the game. The that's rest all of the you game, need. Okay, it's, yeah. I just, still like turn-based combat, and... I would, I would yeah. say the element, there, are, there are elements in Bravely Default's actual combat system, not the job system, that uh, other people... I've seen people say it's streamlined. I would not call it streamlined. They coded it to make it much more modern. So, like, um, two, of the, two of the interesting aspects of Bravely Default is the Brave feature and the default feature, and I actually think it's quite ingenious. I don't know about because, streamlined, but it's definitely fresh. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a fresh take on the uh, turn-based system. So normally, each person takes one turn at a time, and you like pretty much go from there, which has been the formula for... And you don't even have to think about it, really. It's yeah, you don't have to think about it. Yeah, it's, one turn. it's the formula for the past ten decades. I mean, the past... Ten decades? Ten de- <laughs> past a lot of decades. decades. Uh, past decade. Um, turn-based combat really hasn't changed, um, like, standard turn-based combat. Um, Bravely Default really makes it nice in that, you know, you can, uh, you can Brave, which pretty much uh, expends... A certain amount of points so you can do multiple turns with a single character. Yeah, so you kind of like borrow a turn from the future. <laughs> yeah, you borrow a turn. But really? the thing is you can actually store uh, yeah. store turns by using default, which most uh, – there is no defense. Um, there is no defense uh, – not There's feature. no defend. Yeah, there's no defend. There's no actual de- – you can't select defend. It's, it's actually called default. And while you will take half damage, um, you store an extra turn for the following turn. So you can use two turns and then not have it, you know, pump – punish you in the future and then and then of course uh there are a lot of like abilities it's not just defending to yeah. store turns there's a lot of abilities where you can uh 
like I remember like in the performer class you can uh, give each person an extra turn later, or you can steal turns from a, from the enemy. Yeah, which so is interesting. There's a lot of strategy behind like how it's not, you... it's not just deferring your turns to later. You can actually kind of like manipulate, you know, how many turns everyone has with other yeah. skills throughout. So it's a little it's bit more in depth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now, is it, is it like another extra resource to manage beyond your mana and your health and et cetera? Like, yeah. And and some skills require it. Like you can't do the skill unless you have two of these brave points stocked yeah. up. Like so the thief, the thief's move. What is it called? Like Godspeed Strike or something like that, right? That yep. like that expends two, I believe, two uh, brave points. Meaning, if you if you're at the beginning of the battle and you you have one brave point. You're gonna you're gonna attack really strong, but the next turn you're not gonna be able to attack, and you're gonna be left defenseless. If you know you can be fucked really bad. Yep, that's how the game is. Pretty fun. <laughs> <They're> pretty much. <laughs> I would say that the I would say the difficulty is actually a lot higher than I was expecting. I was expecting to like pretty much steamroll enemies, but like some of the bosses for some reason gave me a run for their money. Like they just one hit everything from me. Were you and, playing on normal or hard? Yeah, I was playing on normal. I was like sort of surprised. I was like, what the Play shit? Play it on hard. Yeah, I, I, that's the thing with the job systems is you might have like a setup that works really well for like the encounter yeah. in the area, and then you reach like a boss encounter where your setup just doesn't match it very well, and you can't just, you know, you can't just uh, go through the motions and you know, just try to take on the boss. You might have to think about, oh, okay, I see the boss is doing these yeah. types of things. I need to come up with a, you know, class or party that can negate that somehow. Yeah. So some, some, sometimes you'll meet those little missteps, you know, in certain boss encounters where you need to switch things up, which I think is actually really, really cool. And, you, and But there is a feature that, you know, if you're really dying, it can sort of help you. Oh, which is the, the yep. second, what is that called? Is it called second? Bravely. No, I don't remember. <laughs> Bravely second? Is it called Bravely second? That's, well, that's when you press start and you yeah, just yeah. freeze time. Yeah, you freeze yeah. time, and that's like a lifesaver. If like if you're gonna if your party is about to get wiped or whatever crap, you can use that as like a state, uh, like pretty much. I mean, is it, is it like a cooldown gauge or something like that? Yeah, so yeah. That so it's like real time cooldown base. Like it takes like twelve hours for like I don't know. There's a some amount of time you need to actually pass like real time. Like that needs to yes. pass eight, eight hours. hours. Yeah. You know when you guys mentioned about moving your character around the field, like you can take over someone else's turns. That reminded me a lot of like Radiant Historia, because in that game what you can do is that you can swap um, initiative with other enemies or with other player characters to go before them or take their spot, so that way you could like heal this character before he dies. It's or not really the same. Yeah, it's, the it's the not... game that I actually think was closest to that was Xenosaga 2 and 3. Yeah, you can yeah. you can boost. It's called It was called boosting in those games where you can... It's, not, it's actually, I think it's for the uh, or in Xenosaga 3 anyways, each character could boost, and basically it was really the same thing where you could store a turn for later. Um, and then... Kind of like Xenogears too, like, where you can store a combat. So I like think you that, can take multiple combos. Yeah, that, that's, that was the thing in terms of the default system that seemed the most similar to me was Xenosaga 3, I believe. Mm, um, right. Yeah. I haven't played that yet, so it, I mean, I've played an hour If you play that. Fire Emblem, it's much, much like that dancer rule a bit from Fire Emblem, mm -hmm. sort of giving a person an extra turn, something like that. Something of that effect. Is the best way to think of it, but that's uh, that's the strategy. Um, and I, I I know David brought this up earlier, but I can't emphasize enough how much just like the the no the the altering of your encounter rate is yeah. you know, it's 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 it, you know, it's almost like a, a too much of a convenience where I don't want to play without it in any other game, where you know you're just walking in a dungeon and you beat the boss and like you don't want to walk all the way back and then deal with encounters every ten steps. Even for non-random yeah. encounters, you should have that system. I'm being yes. <laughs> even for non-random well, encounters. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like, like before you could use an item or well, something. Well, some games yeah. have like an item. Like Tales yeah. games have holy, holy bottles. Bottle. Yeah, and but it's it's just a really really nice convenience. And I think now is a good time for me to bring up the second half of the game, which has gotten some. Uh, oh God, it's so bad. <laughs> Uh, without getting into details for spoilers or anything, you end up having to repeat uh, parts of the game again. Uh, Think Steinsgate. Oh, Think Steinsgate. Oh. <laughs> yes, uh, Steinsgate. Oh, yeah, I guess. Like, actually, it's like, funny because the guy who wrote it too. That's the funny part. It's the guy, oh, really? it's the guy who wrote it. The Steinsgate. The guy who oh, wrote Steinsgate oh. also wrote Bravely Default. So. You think yep. he brought some of that with him? So. Yeah. so you end up having to basically redo things, and it's more than just once or twice. Uh, if you want to get four the times. best ending, yes, it's four times. Uh, wow. And, like, I going through that 
part of the game did sour me a little. I mean, the battle system's still great, and let me just say that there are some extra boss encounters that they're really, really cool. And especially in like chapter eight, which is one of the final chapters, there are some really tough. There are some really tough encounters with some of the bosses, um, and it's just. Uh, the, the, and those, some of those are really cool because they're actually really difficult and you have to really work around them. Any, but anyways, re, redoing the dungeons and all that definitely felt like a chore at times. And I can only imagine how much worse it would feel if you couldn't just turn the encounter rate all the way down. <laughs> Granted, I mean, it makes it worse because a lot of the dungeons, I mean, well, there are many dungeons in the game that look very the same. Like the, the I mean, like actual castle dungeon, like the dungeon layout. They they all have like the same like architectural the, features. Yeah, the temples. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's an, so it's annoying because you're already going through them again four times like on a regular basis. Now you're doing them again for the next fucking four chapters. It's absolute bullshit. And it's one of the it's one of the, like it's one of the uh, places where the narrative pretty much you know brings the gameplay down with it. it sort of sucks. Yeah, I I think the chapters five through eight they were if anything they were an interesting idea. Uh, in terms of what they were trying to do and trying to combine, like, the story and what they were trying to do with the, that and the gameplay. So I think it was interesting, but the execution just kind of leaves me yeah, there. Yeah. confused. Uh, and I think they, they could have tackled the idea in a different manner, uh, <clears throat> I think. It was just, it was, it wasn't, it, to be honest, in the end, it wasn't just, it wasn't very fun going through those chapters. So, it, you know, that kind of yeah. destroys the point of being a game. Uh, that's that's kind of odd that's, because what I've noticed in most RPGs is that they start kind of slow and not too interesting, and then they become more and more as the time goes on. But it seems like this kind of flips it just a tad, not too, but of course that that probably over. I mean, there's still a slow start. start I would say there's still a slow start. It's just the once you get ramped up, you actually you end up repeating the ramped up sections. What's like, actually What's actually kind of funny is, like, the first four chapters of the game, in terms of... Now I'm going to talk about story. The first four Pacing. chapters of the game, the story is pretty basic. It's, you know, it's... There's, Cliche. Yeah, uh, there's four crystals of one of each element. Does this sound familiar? Uh, and you, you you, have, it's actually like Final Fantasy V. You need to visit, yes. like, each temple and make sure five. that every single one of them yes. is all right. And it's also a little bit of an element of Final Fantasy III, where like you yes. go to a town, oh. you go to a town, and then like that that town will have kind of its own little story oh, that you have to yeah. solve, and that we're unrelated oh. to like everything else. Um, and that that actually reminded me a lot of Final Fantasy three, uh, and the actual three, not <laughs> not six. Um, and but anyways, I don't think the narrative is bad. It's maybe not very complex at that point, but it's it's just a pretty simple you know story, and it's Are there twists. Or, the, or, I mean, there are twists, not yet. but like it's really obvious. Like you could yeah. tell from like chapter two, like holy I'm shit. I'm only in chapter Wait. three, and I have suspicions. Well, let me just say that once you get in chapter five, that's kind of when the gameplay turns a uh, little bit frustrating. But that's kind of where the story actually, I guess, gets, that, that's where it gets a little bit more complex and interesting. Is the word that's I'd put. Interesting. Uh, maybe it's not. I don't know if it's executed all too well, but that's where the story. That's at interesting least, ideas. It yeah, there's some. There's some ideas, and uh, without Steins spoiling... Uh, yeah, it's actually a paste like Steins Gate. That's part oh, of the interesting. problem. Okay, yeah, don't that, spoil me. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil, but that's where that's where the story gets more interesting. And, and then you get to the end of the game. The end of the game, in terms of story again, I think it's satisfying enough, but it, I just felt like there could have been a better way to get it, go about it other than the, 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 design, the design decision they had for chapters 5 through 8. Hmm. So. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I, that's pretty much how I feel. I was... I actually were. I'm actually curious on what you guys thought about the characters because I know I absolutely hate two of the characters in this game. Like, absolutely despise Chiz, them. Look at this. Chiz and Anya's. Yes, they're so absolutely horrendously bad. Like, I, I like this oh, is this is the situation where these. Okay, so the character types. For well, Anya's there's a, re- there's a reason why I think there's a reason why Simon and I haven't talked about characters up to this point. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, it's it's, not the, I don't it's not the have a problem with either of them, but I mean, they're, they're just not characters. They're just boring. Yeah, Ring of yeah, Bells is hilarious, though. I, yeah, Ring of Bells. The thing is about Tiz and Agnes is that they're actually very stereotypical, like old JRPG archetypes. A bit like they're very reminiscent of that. I didn't realize how bad voice acting would actually make them. Like bringing them to life via voice is absolutely horrendous. Yeah, that sucks because Aaron Fitzgerald is a good voice actress. Yeah, I, I mean, like, the voice acting is solid. Like, I'm not saying, like, the... So, yeah, the, the, the voice acting is bad. It's just the voice acting matched up with these, like, char- characteristics. Uh-huh. These, And they're, they're so yeah. shallow, too. They're they're not even, like... 
uh, expanded upon. Like you, oh. they're either happy or they cry or they they're motivated by this goal. There's like no depth to it. It makes like holy shit. It makes Tails characters look like fucking masterpieces. Speaking, God damn it. Speaking of shallow, you know what I find hilarious about this game? You flat out murder the asterisk yes. characters. Yeah. yeah, you murder a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's so, never like, really brought up. And yeah. that, that part actually is a little bit confusing. Like, you, in the beginning. <laughs> you just murdered all, like, all these guys, and it's, you know, you're just a band of, like, kids, and you're just murdering these. Yeah, these this guys. isn't a spoilers act. This is, like, a gameplay separation thing. Yeah. Really- no, I haven't, that's why I haven't huh. set up anything. It's like, it's like Nino Cooney. Someone says, oh, the mom dies. It's on the back of the box. So well, it's kind of well, hard to... How, how it works is you start out with your freelancer class, and then every class after that you get by destro- by killing. Well, I think they can kill, like... I've heard staff. someone brought that up. You kill to earn the class. Yeah, is that that's, it? Yeah, that's yes. pretty much what you so, do. Like, so, so, yeah, for example, no. early in the game, uh, here's a My spoiler favorite. in the first hour. Uh, you meet, well, I was talking about the Black Mage uh, character, oh, yeah. who is basically Edia's, Edia's uh, like, I guess, Body superior guard. at the time. And then, like, you basically kill him because he's a dick. And I mean, yeah, you, yeah. at that Granted, point, that was the one I was pain. satisfied with. I was the one, that was yeah. the one I was satisfied because he's the world's glamorous fucking ass douchebag whore. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> A lot of good stuff. Yeah. I mean, anyway, you don't even anyway, know that guy. Anyways, I feel bad uh, for some of them. I don't want to kill yeah. some of these guys. And some of them get kind of morbid at the end. Like I yeah. remember one lorem area, the flowers and the girls. Don't and like, don't, don't don't say. I'm, hey, I'm hey, spoiling. Yeah. I mean, okay, it, anyways, what I was gonna say about the characters again is Tiz is like probably the least interesting protagonist in a while, which is weird because he's like he's in a sense like the main character, but. He really has no personality. He might at as well have no voice. He literally might as well have no voice. He's That's disappointing. Of, yeah, he's he's basically just kind of like along for the ride. Uh, so you're saying he's almost like a Final Fantasy protagonist? Is that really no, <laughs> no, no, no? Because that, that's like the thing is like the Final Fantasy protagonist. Like every one of them, like even except for ten and twelve. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, even like they were they were along they weren't really along for the ride. Like they have it a pivotal they had a pivotal role. I mean, granted, I'm not saying Tiz uh, a pivotal role, but just like it's no his characteristics, they didn't have his a characteristics role. is like so nonchalant about you just mean his personality, not his role in the story. Yeah, his personality is such I don't know, like wouldn't you say it's pretty nonchalant about almost anything? I, like I mean, you know, I'm fine with that as long as like he has a defined role in the story cuz there's already been some hints to me, again, I'm still only in chapter 3 that there's something more to this guy. I, I just I don't know, like did you like no, don't did you say have any problems now with his Adam like I, don't I just think like he's he's kind of like a he's just like a super nice and he has like no determination I guess he's just well he's not that nice if he's killing everyone no he doesn't have any determination I'm like, <laughs> I'm just, I must protect you or something stupid like I need to go save the I need to go save the town that was destroyed blah 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 I'm like fuck you well to be fair if he's the main character he's, he's not supposed to God really damn. inject too much personality to the guy, but then you can't because you can't really relate to him if he's too strong in one field or the there other. Is, nope. It's supposed to be like you're supposed to inject that into it yourself, aren't you? He's just so he's just a really really boring guy. Like he's like a blank slate. Like I'm actually having a hard time explaining like what 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 was his defining characteristic. Uh, he's a farmer. He, he's a farmer kid who lost his brother. At the end. Yeah, his brother didn't They're he lose actually, his, his whole town. Okay, fine. I was trying to be like like focus down on the like. Why he's so uh, such Anyways, a Anyways, uh, yeah, yeah, and then Anya's. I, I don't think Anya's is a. I don't. I think they did what I. I, I think she was written the way that they wanted her to be written. It's just oh, whether yeah. or not you like that. <laughs> you will either really like her or you will absolutely hate her. She's a very stubborn and in her ways type of person. Like it has, you know, she, uh, and things are unacceptable. Yes, uh, unacceptable. She's um, she's very. She has a very skewed, not skewed. She has a very uh, monochromatic view of uh, good and bad, which I don't. Actually, Adia's whole character thing kind of revolves around that a little bit, <laughs> black yeah. and white. Yeah, the, how, the, how both of them it. do. But I, I figure they're setting something up to, that way to make like things more gray later in the game. Don't say yeah, anything. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's. I mean, yeah, that's the point. I mean, it's like the, okay, that's okay. Like every okay. Well, that's she's the kind point. of annoying, and she's kind of stuck in her ways, and she's kind of stubborn. But that that's kind of the character she is. So I think that's what they are going for. I'm not saying, like, they screwed up in making this character. It's just whether or not you 
you know, that's just the kind of character she is, and whether or not you care for that. I hate incredibly naive characters, like, uh, like pe- extremely sheltered characters. It's one of the reasons why I hate Estelle from Vesperia. It's mm-hmm. like the same reason. I just, I think her, uh, her responses to, like, every single thing just irks me like that one. Is it, and she kind of reminds me a little bit of Abyss in a bit too because the main character being sheltered and then it kind of grows from there so you're telling me that yeah. she's always like that though she, no, like, she doesn't uh, I, without getting spoilers she doesn't really uh, this isn't much of a spoiler but she's her personality is pretty consistent throughout the entire game there's not like there's not like any one moment where it's like oh she goes from this type of character to that type of character like she doesn't go Luke, Luke changes yeah. uh, he changes from person A to person B in Abyss that's that's what I was yeah, thinking. No, I was like, what, what, I would say times? I would say almost all these characters that you encounter are very flat. They're actually now, they're actually no static. They're oh, static. Uh, so so that's the favorite game of the year, eh? No, there's no, <laughs> no. characters in this. We're, game. we're talking. We're, anyways, first of all, generic comment. First of all, I don't think a static character is necessarily inherently bad. Okay, it, true. Uh, but you know, it's just the fact that. You know, since Anya's is very similar throughout much of the game, if you don't like her at the beginning, you probably won't like her at the end. Um, now, anyways, what Zach just said, this game is still a really, really, really fun game. We're just kind of dwelling on the parts of the game that are perhaps a little bit more questionable. But the- it sounds to me like all we've gotten going here right now is just the job system. Uh, I would say anything gameplay-wise is pretty much good, save the repetitive parts. Well, and also, I guess talking about characters still, talking about the other two characters who are actually much better characters. They're really, so awesome. Like Ring of Bell, Ring of Bell is like he's a womanizer, uh, and that's that's. that's, that's Seems like people's favorite character is a womanizer. Well, that's, that's only like his, that's only the surface of his character, though. And yeah, yeah. The thing is, like the most the most womanizer characters that are out there. They're not very like self aware. Like they're sort of like off the air. <laughs> they're, they're not very self aware. Ring of Bell is very self aware of who he is. Like, yes. Uh, but he, the, he, um, he actually becomes, uh, again, a minor spoiler maybe, he, the story becomes much more important relating to him in the I second half. The um, and so I think there's a little bit more interest there uh, other than the other characters. And Idea, uh, you learn this early on, so this isn't a spoiler. Idea basically has you know relationships with pretty much all the antagonists in the game. So all the antagonists. <laughs> well, Except the, except the okay, yeah, right, sure. <laughs> uh, and so that part is there's some interest there as well. So I think those two characters uh, are definitely the two stronger ones. And in fact, I believe uh, there was like a Japanese poll, and those two were voted voted the highest. I mean, I think. I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, I think they're they're certainly more interesting. <laughs> the naming convention, by the way, sucks in this game. Whoever Name? named these characters, whoever named these characters, terrible. What you don't like Ring of Bell? That sounds. I like that name. You don't like. Okay, Adia sounds really dumb. And Adia is. It sounds just like Final Fantasy VIII. Adia, Adia Lee. Is you're telling me Adia Lee sounds good. Adia Lee. Oh yeah, it sounds awesome. <laughs> it's Arier. It's more. It's it's, it's, it's a not fantasy bad. name. Who cares? Like Titus. Oh my God! Shoot me now. I'm well, not saying Titus is a good name either. Titus in the, no, in it's the, a terrible name. In the end, uh, I think the game is a really fun game with a. Uh, personally, I think the second half is kind of a big blemish on what's overall, what's otherwise a very enjoyable title. Uh, I guess one thing I haven't said yet is that I think the music is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's and amazing. I don't, I don't, and I, this this might sound a little bit of a, an exaggeration, but I think this this soundtrack is a little bit more than just uh, one of the better soundtracks of as of late. I think it's one of the best soundtracks ever. <laughs> I, it's very very good. Yeah. Um, it might be a little bit lacking in quantity, uh, like a lot of some of the dungeon themes are reused. Uh, but over, you listen to the actual soundtrack, like it's very well, like it's yes. extremely varied. It's just there's and don't also, get a lot of use of it in the game. And, I, and this is a very simple thing, but it I, I think it worked very well. Each main character kind of has a different instrument tied to them. Yeah, for example, like special. For example, Tiz is a it's a tin flute. Uh, yeah. Agnes is a violin. Um, Ring of Bell is an accordion and some other things. And so, like, there are several themes throughout the game that kind of play on that. Uh, like for example, uh, scenes between Tiz and Anya's will will have like duets of these two of those two instruments and and other things like that are built into the soundtracks. So I think it's really well constructed. Yeah, it's in that well crafted. It's very like it's very. I hate using the term self aware. Like the per- composer did a good job in like understanding um, the game and like creating uh, yes. 
a soundtrack the for the game. Really fits. It's it, it's not just you know oh here's a typical dungeon theme or here's a typical uh, um, you know character theme. It, it, it kind of works all together. Definitely aware of the game. So. Yeah. Bravely Default's going to win uh, Soundtrack of the Year. You heard it here, folks. Uh, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> um, going to be very hard to beat. Very hard to beat. I'll, I'll wait and see because Witcher usually has some great music too. That's so true. I'll, I'll look forward to seeing that's what true. else comes out. I would say, I would say, if I, if I had to put my like last like my thoughts on the game is that it's easy for me to look over the various faults the game has. Yes, because, that's, because of that's what, it's what you know. Your favorite about. games have problems with them. Yes. So, and yeah. I, I like I'm actually really excited for Bravely Second because I, it can be so good if they uh you're not. Uh I'm a, like yeah, <laughs> you're I'm so anti sequel There are so many things that they can improve on and if they can, you know, kind of avoid some of the issues that Bravely Default has, I think it could be like you know, only up. They have a. They'll have a bigger budget this time. I can't, so I, can't see them, I can't see them making the jump that they did from FF5 to Bravely Pre Default. Well, <laughs> Bravely <laughs> Second. I'm sorry. That's just that's that's how I. Do I don't it. think they're trying. I'm being optimistic. Bottom. I think there's a lot of things that they can simply, basically, polish from here. You know, I guess there's the argument to be made that it won't be different enough. But if they can avoid some of the trap balls, I think it can be. You know, I think it could well, be really you, cool. you mentioned like the, one of the things is that I messed up. I the story is a bit morbid, and so that they can really take that into a whole like oh, and I'll progressive matter. I would be there's a, there's a there's a teaser video for Bravely Second if you it, at the end of Bravely Default, and it oh, it, it does seem to be uh, kind of a tonal shift a little bit. Um, Which way? Uh, yeah, we're, I no, guess we're moving. More, I guess you don't want to it's kind of get too much it's into more, it. No, no, it's, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, well, I want to see it's oh. more serious. I would say they're just exploiting another anime trope. We didn't have like now we have we're moving away from the naive female protagonist to this gothic world leader. Well, I anime guess tropes can be dark. I don't. What do you say? I was like, I'm, I'm sorry. I was like, pretty. I like, what 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 becomes an anime trope and just becomes a trope at that point? Okay, all right. I mean, that's like you can talk about like go to. There is a tunnel. Uh, obviously, have the dark metal chapter. Yeah, it, it's I, like, there is a tunnel. It is much more. It is. I feel like it is much more dark. It's not. It's not as lighthearted, maybe. Yeah. But I Which, guess the, end the first game is very lighthearted. At least for most so, of But the thing is, you mentioned about the characters, like, do you care enough about these characters leading into Bradley's second? Uh, is it going to be the same characters? Yeah. Well, 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 uh, well, well, well I'm not let's, play. Let's, not, let's not get too much into that, because I'd one rather not spoil, right. like, the fate of these characters either. Yeah. But. Not going to say. <laughs> yeah, let's let's hold off on that. So uh, let's let's just go ahead instead and move on to... Um, an, <laughs> I have a list of games we're going to talk about, but they're all games that I haven't really played. So it's like I'm looking like when's the next time I can just go completely silent again? So I guess Ding and Ropa. This is a good game. This is a good game. This is a game I gave a ten, and everyone yelled at me for it. Ding and Ropa. Dongon Ropa. I think it's Dongon Ropa. Someone Dang and Ropa. Dongon Ropa. Okay, okay. So, Dang and Ropa. First of all, uh, I, I know a little Very bit about fair. the game because I've read some reviews. I read David's review, which he gave it a 10 on our site. But which I would not give. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm, I guess I'm still I wouldn't give Persona 4 a 10 either, but you know. <laughs> everyone, has, everyone has their own values. But uh, yeah. anyways, I guess, can you kind of just explain, like, what exactly it is? You know, because I see, like, there's this bear guy and it has something. <laughs> Wait, do you want with, the narrative like, premise or do you want, like, the well, actual gameplay premise? Well, both, I guess. It's like, all I know about it is, like, there's this bear guy, and then there's, like, these trials, and there's these students, and some of them die, and... Can I take uh, this image? Yeah, go for it. Uh, you're, so you're basically, the, you're the protagonist, your name is Makoto. You go, you get accepted to this academy called Hope Academy. You go there, and then uh, you fall asleep, you wake up, and you're inside Hope Academy, except apparently all the windows are, like, barred, not barred, but, like, blocked off and everything. And you're stuck with, like, how many students was it? Shit. Fifteen. Fifteen other students. And the people that got accepted into Hope Academy are, like, ultimate people. Like, people who are, like, let's say, ultimate gambler, ultimate... They're, um, they're prodigies. Yeah, they're super prodigies in, like, a certain area. And the thing is, they got accepted, but they were somehow apparently kidnapped. And the only way to get out is to pretty much graduate. And one of the conditions of graduating is that you must kill someone. Oh. And not get caught. And not get caught. So the gameplay, I guess, that's, the, that's the narrative premise. So the gameplay premise is that... Um, it's, so it's, it moves on like a visual novel. So like, so like a first murder happens, and you pretty much go all around the school trying to investigate who murdered that person. Then it moves on to like a trial sequence, much like Phoenix, right? Uh, and then you pretty much have like these uh, conversation duels where you must like refute other person's like statements and stuff like that, and then pretty much come to the conclusion: Hey, this is the person that killed someone, and this person's gonna now 
die. If they get caught, they die. Yeah. So, I've, I've been told numerous times before is that anything past chapter one is kind of off hands as far as how the story goes. So yeah, yeah let's let's talk more about the gameplay. So you said it's like kind of like Ace Attorney series. So is it set up like that too? Like you can stop someone in the middle of a conversation so, and present evidence. So what is it called? Um, in Ace Objection. Attorney, yeah, in Ace Attorney, there was those three sequences, cross examinations. I, I, I was stalling, trying to figure out what the phrase was. Uh, you have cross examinations, and you can pretty much object to a certain statement that a person has. Uh, you pretty much have that. That's actually the uh, the pretty much the gist and like the bread and yeah. butter of the it's trial. It's called a nonstop debate. It's it's basically a cross examination, but even more even crazier because it, like the camera zooms around and like the statements fly around. It's not simple. Oh yeah, and and you literally so, shoot down people's statements with like a bullet. Really? <laughs> so. It's, so it's it's, it's it's just a real. Is it like it plays out in front of you like that? It's really it's a really over the top presentation. Yeah, but so, the thing is, yeah. it keeps you engaged because you're not just reading. You're you're pretty much uh, like actively moving around trying to see is this statement right, or is this statement wrong, and then it gets it gets a little complex where you can act, you don't actually pull in uh, the stuff that you uh, found it throughout your investigation. You can actually take a statement that a person is making during the cross examination and then refute it back at them, like uh, something that's another person said. So like there's in- various interesting mechanics. I would say the bulk of like the gameplay that's really interesting is the nonstop. The not yeah. Well no no that's the nonstop phase. Oh. The actual trial sections, much oh, like okay. Phoenix right. Because yeah, um, there's a lot of functions in the uh, in the trials beyond the nonstop debate. There's this like. There's this uh, hangman's ga- gambit, which is God, basically I hangman. Hate I hate that shit. It's so yeah, bad. I'm not a huge fan of that. Then there's also a rhythm game, where yeah. you're where you're like uh, trying to. You're, you're no. accruing points. You're accruing points, and then you get to burst all of your opponent's statement and like throw it back at them. Yeah, they're, they're basically just being jerks and kind of listening. It's a, it's a mini game. It's an assortment of mini games. But yeah, like, and then there's, there's that sounds more interesting than just straight up Phoenix Wright style. So well, I mean, like it, it, it doesn't. Inter- the thing is, it does an interesting take on like the very um, like somewhat boring style of refuting a person's statement in Phoenix Wright. And there's also there's also this mini game kind of thing where you recount the events of what happened in manga style. And it's oh, yeah, at the very end, your closing statement. That's kind of cool. I like yeah, that it's, idea. It's, I mean, it, like, so it's a combination of minigames. It, like, they're all, of, all of them are unique, and whether you hate them or not, that depends on the person, but I would say they're very interesting. Um, like, I think the fact, like, more than the content itself is just how it, like, throws these, all these new, this new stuff at you. It keeps you on your toes. It, it keeps things intense, just like Phoenix Wright, but but more so because the presentation is just over real the top. out there. Yeah. It's over the top. I would say I would say it's it's one of the better visual novels I have played. Oh, it's the best visual yeah. novel I've ever played. And I hear so, the second one is even better, which is why I kind I'm, of regret I'm super excited. A 10 because I, I will say that um if you okay, so you guys have you guys played Persona you guys have played Persona 4, Persona 3, right? Yeah. yeah. Four, not three. Um, so, like, part of the you know part of the enjoyment that people get is from like talking to people and like building up social links, right? Yeah. So that's like, actually like one of the big parts of Danganronpa is that you guys you build up relationships with characters and social links. Guys, yeah, they're pretty much social links, and you get to learn that's about cool. them. Uh, the thing that the thing about that's very different. The dynamic is different. Is in Persona Four, they pretty much are with you throughout the entire game. Yeah, here, and these people not. are dying. Yeah, here it's not. So like you built so. Like, one instance where I built up, like, max relationship with this person, and then they die, and I'm like, fuck. No, that's not just... <laughs> well, at least you got to the max. Uh, I mean, yeah, from, like, if you want to be, like, very nuanced and be like, oh, okay, I guess now I max... I'm glad that person... I maxed out that person before they die. But the point is, like, you like you, you build up a relationship, so it's an interesting game design. You're like, as you're building up the relationship, depending on how far you... Uh, how far... How, know, how much you know about them, they pretty much rip, rip away, so... It's it's more of a sense of immediacy than in Persona 4. It's like, well, I guess I can take some time off from the dungeon and meet around with people. Here it's like, well, you got something to solve. It, everything's more... I assume that you don't much ha- you don't have much time to kind of sit around. Yeah, you, you don't. There's a, there's a set amount of time. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's I would say all aspects of the game are very enjoyable to some degree. Or they'll, they'll get some emotion out of you to some degree, even if it's yeah. a... That's that, that's that's kind of one of the things I was more interested about because I haven't I have not played BLR I've 
only beaten two of the Ace of the Phoenix Wright games, and so I, everyone kept comparing it to those two games. I wanted to know what this was about. I've only heard things, and so obviously this is more of a uh, this is like percent of, a pretty dark game. It's of, oh, it's very uh, dark. Some hurt. some of the uh, well, oh, I don't God. want to spoil yes. anything, but some of the deaths yeah. are really gruesome. So, like not like some of them aren't totally visually gruesome. But some, well, it's some are. The concept, of, the concept of when, once like, you think about them, you realize, holy shit! How could anyone even come up with that? The the, the best, the, anime. the best, or you <laughs> can say the worst part of it is that the one dishing out these deaths is a fucking teddy bear. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. And it, it's like it's like Saw. It's like it's like from Saw. It's like it's, I mean, yeah, that that's an actual genre in Japan, Japanese media, like Saw kind of things where you're trapped in a thing. Deaths. What? Karmic deaths? No, the, the, the kind of like Saw, where you're trapped in a place and someone's telling you to play a game. You got you got Jigsaw just oh, telling yeah. you to go over here and yeah, game of death, trapped, kidnapped. That's a common thing in Japan, actually. It's it's a good game. Story I would say if you own a Vita, you need to play this game. Oh yeah, it's, I, it's a killer app. Yeah, it's yeah. Personally, I, I own that game, but yeah. So from what you guys have said, it's that Vita's got another solid title that people should. I mean, a lot of people like Nine 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 and VLR more. I I like Danganronpa a lot. I don't. That's weird how they compare it to that though. It's like because I've had people tell me straight up, it's not a visual novel. It's much more than that. No, it's not it's a very, like story. It's story. very visual novel. It, it has visual yeah. novel elements in the same way that. Like, because when people say visual novel, they probably mean, like, no interaction at all. Yeah. Well, it's, that's it's, not it's true. There's, there's a lot. There's exploration. There's, there's, uh, it's more an adventure game than a visual novel. But really, uh, I would... it's, a genre, it's a genre blender. Okay. I, you, can make, you can make the other case for that some of those games are adventure games, it's, too. But yeah. yeah, I know. It's a visual novel. It's a rhythm game. It's a, it's a thing. It's a first-person shooter. Fuck that. It's, it's everything. Did you... And they recently announced the sequel, right? Yes, I am yeah. so Super Dan- Super Dangan Rumba. By Despair? Yep. Despair. Goodbye Despair, yeah. Goodbye Despair. I'm, I'm excited. excited. Yeah, and that's coming like, like in months. August or something. Yeah. Yeah, I am so I'm, I assume this was just one in t- one project in its entirety. Like they yeah, did probably. pretty much one go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they probably just said uh, they picked up both at the same time and they like wanted well, to work they on had one. To, and they, they pretty much it. cut the games in half because this is the Vita port which is actually two games in one. It's it's like a two pack. Oh really? Yeah. I didn't know. So they like some people were upset about that, but I I think really? it's it's a Did they cut anything? Came to America before, so I wouldn't be well, upset with that. Let me just let me just make sure. These games originally came out on PSP separately, right? Yeah. And then they in 2010. In, well, in one Japan. Time. 10, yeah. and, and then in they, then they based kind of like bundled them and released them on Vita, and yeah. now for the West they're kind of unbundled again. Yes, so. they're un- that, oh okay, I didn't know they're unbundled, the but it's the it's the ver- the Vita version because yeah. it has school mode, which is an additional mode that was not in the PSP version. So yeah, so they localized the Vita version, but they cut it in half basically. Which does I it, personally don't have a problem with. Does yeah, the first I, game like have? Uh, does the first game end in like any sort of cliffhanger or kind of? Uh, I, I, you know what? No, I'm not going to say anything because it, okay. it's very hard to explain. But it, yeah, it, I would say it's as conclusive as nine nine nine. Wait, I thought you said you only got the chapter three. No, I beat it. Oh, never mind then. I think you're the one who said chapter three, and that was about where the default. I, I'm yeah. losing my mind. Okay. <laughs> I, I would, I would say it's as, it's as, it's as conclusive as nine nine nine. How about that? Yeah. Have you played that game? I haven't played it either. Oh, fuck. Yeah, no. Yeah, okay. I haven't, I haven't played that so, a Sitting there, though. I would say visual novels is like one of the most underrated genres ever. Well, it's it's, <laughs> it's, well, it's story driven and RPGs. I mean, if you're a fan of RPGs, that's what you get the most out of. God, I assume. I'm so sad. Well, well, let's let's go. <laughs> well, Simon, sad. Um, let me talk about something that I played this past month because I didn't really. Um, I, I did cover a couple games uh, this past month. Uh, Toki Den came out this past month, and I played that. And I reviewed yeah, it, that? and it was um, it, it really hurts me sometimes when I see when I try to compare my review to others, and I see like, oh, I said the same thing a lot of other people are saying. I wish mine was more, you know, unique in some sense. But it's it's the case that Tokyo Den's a lot like Monster Hunter, you know. It's it is but Monster it's Hunter. kind of a it, it pretty much is. It's a lot. It's pretty bare bones in regards to that when it comes to because. What happens is that you choose a character, of course. It, they've got a ton of armor, a lot of weapons and stuff Big like that. Weapons. So, and, it, and, and, and 
not not so big. It's it's kind of, it's they're kind of made up to be big, but it's it's not as gigantic as some of the crap like in Monster Hunter that I've seen. I haven't played Monster Hunter since the first one came out, and I wasn't a fan, so I didn't continue on from there. But it's it's a lot of that. You get dropped in, and you take on a quest, and go do it. Come back, do the quest, keep doing like that. So there's like a list of quests, and then there's fetch quests, and then there's some challenges and increased difficulty. But you know, it's it doesn't really grow much from there. You know, it's it's like you go do a quest, and you come back. There's some story beats, and actually, you know, the best part of that game, the voice acting was really good. Um, really, the, I, I really enjoyed the voice acting in that game. Yeah, it's like they actually you. You kind of, they kind of felt sincere, is there, is and there, that's like more than you can ask for in a lot of other games. Is there Johnny like, it's Japanese voice acting. Right? I, 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 to be fair, it's only Japanese uh, um, with subtitles, but it's like it was good. The voice acting was pretty good, and um, even if the story itself wasn't the best, you know, it's it's pretty common Japanese myth, mythology kind of stuff where it's like the demons are coming and they're protecting themselves to hold up in this small village and you know they they have this one girl who's trying to defend the village from being invaded but things go on where she's kind of knocked out of you know uh, being able to protect them the shrine maiden kind of character so there's that but um so that in that kind of stuff it's the story you know it's, it's interesting enough that it carries it through to the end um but the gameplay part it's it could use some work. The quests are kind of, like I said, it's a lot of the same stuff. Like, okay, go to this area, defeat this boss, continue on. But that's or, like the entirety like, of the genre. Like, that's how I like that. Yeah. But that's, and that's the thing where it's like, this is, this has been going on long enough, you know, where it's a lot of the, like, one of the things in the game is that you face a boss character and your goal is to pretty much destroy each of its limbs. And from each limb, you can, pull up um, materials to use to build new weapons and items, because crafting's big in that game, as you can expect. Um, But after fighting the same boss character, like, for, like, the dozenth time, it becomes really tedious, and it's only until later in the game where they kind of bring in the variety of boss characters, because that's the main pull. Otherwise, the regular characters, there's, like, maybe six or seven different normal hench characters, like, the minion characters, but the boss characters is about a dozen um, and they get better. So it sounds like standard it's, Monster Hunter. It's really it's very standard Monster Hunter surprise. tropes, and it's, and it's it, that's the thing. But at the same time, it's that you can kind of see where they could go with it. And like I mentioned, it's that Monster Hunter for me, from everything I've seen, it's it seems like it's very much the same. And what they did in the most recent Monster Hunter I've seen is that kind of like what Toki Den's kind of done, where it's it's very equipment driven. You don't have levels. I mean, you do, you do have levels, but obviously the, it's the equipment that you have that builds your character. It's not necessarily the stats, yeah, yeah. your core stats that do it. So that that kind of stuff, I uh, I've not really been into that much. It's like I want to feel stronger. I, I, the characters, this like I said, there's a lot of variety in the weapons and armor you carry. There's a ton, a ton of armor. Like there's probably over like a hundred different combinations that you could come up with. Um, more than that, like thousands maybe, but. Like you can see where they could go with that, so I'm like hopeful if they ever come out with a sequel that it's they can do a lot with it. But other than that, um, Zach, are you going to be okay? So the side. I'm, I'm sorry. Are you going to be okay? Oh, this, yeah. This, <laughs> this, coming from this Zach. I'm like I'm like down the street from a police. <laughs> oh, good job. Right outside. It's it's really bad weather outside. And so I was gonna make yeah, a joke, they, they and Zach, me. don't let them haul you off. Don't let them find <laughs> out about the murder. No, it's, I'll, I'll keep talking about Tokyo. Let's talk about my Tokyo. <laughs> no, it's that's so. There's that. But then, um, right now, it's. I mean, I've, I've been pretty much going through my backlog lately. So it's that. Playing Legend of Dragon. I'm currently right? reviewing. Yeah, I'm playing Legend of Dragon for yeah. the very first time. I have not touched that I game ever. I haven't either, but I want to. <laughs> yeah, I'm not it's, here. It's kind of. It's kind of cool. Um, the thing is with Legend of Dragoon is that, for, for one thing, the soundtrack's great. It reminds me a lot of Panzer Dragoon. It's a lot of like tribal kind of music where it's a lot of drums and like there's even steel drums in there. But it's a lot of that kind of music where it's it's a lot more. Um, uh, I, I, I'm, the word excuse me. But like I guess tribal is the best word I can describe it. It's it's a lot of um, uh, like downbeat music. But anyway. Um, it's that the battle system's kind of cool where it's like it's not so much um, <clears throat> the once again it's not in this case it's not really much the equipment you have it's the skills you earn that become stronger and then it's got this cool little um, 
a timing based system where you have to like uh, a box comes in, swoops in, and then you have to hit the button at the right time to um, attack a monster, and then you have to kind of keep hitting the button. But then it it comes in later where like I, I've only gotten like a few hours in the game, but it comes in later where you have to time a button press so that you dodge an enemy's attempt to break that combo in the middle of it and then continue it on from there. And so that's kind of cool. Um, the downside right now that I've experienced is that the story is very stiff. Like the writing, um, there's no voice acting, as you can imagine, a game from that old, like 2000 doesn't have voice acting. Um, but the writing is very stiff. Like it's very, uh, it's very also traditional. It's like the main characters they don't know that they're in love with each other, but they've been with each other since they were children and stuff. Oh, it's like it's like you know, it's, they pretty much gave it away right away. But then later they come back. It's like no, that's, I'm not interested in him. It's like you just said you would stay with him forever. So it's like I don't know what it's. it's what do you you want know where things are going. <laughs> I know it's. it's like, <laughs> You said that you, I want to be by your side for the forever, and it's like, where else would you go? It's like you can't just be friends, can you? You're you're a guy and girl, come on. Yeah. But it's 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 that kind of thing. Where, and you know, I'm, I've come to the point in the story where Dart, the main character, as obviously it's on the cover, he turns into this, he gets this crazy dragoon of legend look, um, where he's got these wings and he's got this cool armor. But I I've stopped it right there, so I haven't really moved on from there. But yeah. that's that's like that, but then I'm also reviewing Atelier um, Eska Alaji, um, which is coming out in a couple weeks. Um, it's com- it's actually out next Friday, um, or I should say this Friday yep. in Europe, and then the following Tuesday in, in America. In that game, it's my first time playing the Atelier series, and so it's it's really interesting playing a very laid back kind of game. It's not it's about as good as the music's yeah. great. Gus makes the great soundtrack, but it's very laid back. I'm sorry. It's about it's about as good as the Neptunia series. <laughs> um, was, that, was, that too, was that too much of a love love? No, it's I don't. I wouldn't. I mean, they're very different games. You know, it's I, uh, I'm not very like, Neptunia is more. I'm not very familiar with Neptunia, but doesn't that have a lot to do with like item management and resource yeah, management? It's, it's a lot of yeah. Neptunia is kind of Neptunia is more like it's. It's more about the comedy and stuff like that. It's more about the the oh, upbeat comedy. Right. It's more about this. It's it's very the, in Neptunia. It's, they break the fourth wall like every other line. So it's 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 more about that over the top kind of thing. Atelier is more kind of easygoing, like a light RPG kind of stuff. Where yes, the most complex part of that game is the out of crafting and the um creating weapons and items and stuff like that and then doing all these different quests and missions and things like that but it's more kind of a day-to-day situation where in the game you have um you're basically set up on a schedule where you have four months to complete these missions to do where you have one main mission to do and then you have all these other things you can do off the side and then based on your progress um at the end of those four months your rank goes up you can do more things you can um you you build up a workshop yeah, but it's in this game, of course, Not is that this. you also play Logi, which is a dude, yeah. um, which is a first for the series. Uh, of course, you can play as you can. Uh, you had male characters in your party in the past, but this is the first time you can actually choose it. Um, I haven't gotten too far um, in this game. Um, I only got to play it in the past few days because that's when I got the game. But it doesn't seem too different from each other. I, I was expecting more of a black and white kind of thing, where it's like she would be very focused on the crafting while he would be going out and finding all these monsters. Um, but in this case, it's that I switched over and played Logi, the main char- the male character, and I was still using the cauldron <laughs> to create items. So I was like, That's um, like three portable. <laughs> I was like, I was trying to think. I was like, where is the difference here? I was, I was thinking. Okay, well, you know, maybe there's some crafting, but most of his stuff he has to do, most of his quest is killing monsters and reporting back. Yeah. But it doesn't still seem to be that way, so I don't know where things are going to go. I was like, I was, I'm hoping more. I'm, I'm hoping it's more than just a pal swap. So <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Speak, speaking of reviews, I think I think we pumped out another review this month. Yeah. Yeah. Let us do a review. I don't know. Adam reviewed it. What did I review? Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so no, we're not going to talk about Dragon Guard or <laughs> Might and Magic, but but it looks like it's not on here. It's she's too shy. Might and Magic, yeah, it's gone. So, it's lots of it. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's there's other game we reviewed, but the person who reviewed it's not here, so 
Yeah, no, Adam, you... you Lightning Returns, those of you on the site, feel free to read it. We've got a couple reviews for that, yeah. so check it out. Well, we'll yeah. talk about Lightning Returns another... <laughs> well, yeah, maybe next time, I'm sure yeah, you guys... Yeah, Lightning Returns released like, this month, but none of us have really played it much I, I at all. It. We'll talk about... We'll talk about... Well, David has, but we'll talk about it. I think, we'll, I think maybe next time. We'll all I can say is it's weird. Yeah. How, how weird is it on a scale of 1 to 10? Uh, 1 to... Dude, I want to say 7. It's just, like... Like the story is like not thirteen. Any of this happen? That's basic. That's what it. I thought. Okay. How did this happen? Yeah, that's pretty much. How did this happen? Like retcons thirteen. Why are you surprised that Lightning returns retcons thirteen, two, and thirteen? It's, it's not even retconning. It's like the tone is completely different in every way. It's like when is like people are immortal now and they've lived for thousands of years. I don't know what what does this have to do with. And they're wearing the same clothes. Why is this guy? Yeah, they never wash their clothes. That's the worst part. No, I I don't know. It's just part. so weird. Like everything about it is is weird and like I, I really want to play it. It's like I want to work my way up and play Lightning Returns just to see like, how it honestly, is. Honestly, I'm I'm, actually I'm having a little bit of a good time with it, but it's just so oh, weird. But, I've heard the combat system is actually kind of cool. Eh, so. It's like well, cool in a. See, in a I I like it, but at the same time, it's just like I don't want to play this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. I don't want to let it all out. I wish, I wish his combat system was in a different game. Bye bye. <laughs> no, you know, the combat system really. It, it's kind of a little bit confusing at first. Well, that's just how I felt like 13. Like when I first played it, it was confusing, but then I got into it. So. Like, I'm, I'm getting more that's... into the exploration and the. Uh, like it's a it's a quest game. You're doing so like, side quests. That's how you that's how you get a higher attack power, higher all that stuff. That's basically how you level up. Isn't it? Yeah. You know what I call that? It, it's called padding. Isn't that the non-battle gameplay like that gives you experience? Yeah. It's like the battles themselves. So it's just like for money. Really? That's you don't get any experience in the battles. Nope. You what you get is uh, oh, you get okay. EP EP you can use to like teleport or use Kuraga on yourself. It's just so weird. It's like... That is... That's... I don't know how to feel about that. It's, that's bad. Bad. it's like every RPG trapping is turned on its head, and... To be fair, it's like, I'd rather be... You get more... I mean, like in a lot of RPGs, it's that you earn... Well, I should say, like, MMOs, for example, you earn more experience actually doing quests than you do during battles. Like and so you, you, you have an item menu, but it's only, like, six items, and there's, like, no... You get, like, there's no way to expand it? No. Well, maybe. I mean, I'm only like... Well, there's not even chapters. It's it's incredibly non-linear, so... <laughs> it, it, everything about this game is just one big why. Why Why is this? Why is that? <laughs> why did they choose the third one and the last one to experiment well, did, this much instead of, like, the middle one? Like, it's usually experimental. Like, like, it's, like, more experimental than Chrono Cross, more experimental than... Pants. Well, if it's Chrono Cross, uh, I love the battle system in Chrono Cross, so maybe I'll love this. No, one. I love Chrono Cross. Chrono Cross is one of my favorite games, but this is Chrono That's right. Cross. Yeah, it's not. It's you're, you're just you just obviously being more a general sense yeah. that it's they tried to do incredibly something incredibly different. experimental, and I can completely understand all the review scores because it is not refined at all. The frame rate is awful. The uh, the the environments are are. Again, why? Like, why is anything? That, that's pretty much why is anything. Want, let's, let's that's your review. That's your one. I want all the listeners to know that David why? loved thirteen. David loved thirteen. I want you. I want all the listeners oh, yeah, to know yeah, that. I, 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 that should. I should tell you guys that I love thirteen. I and so I, that should. This should be a leading indicator for. <laughs> It's not biased. I, I am it's not. I'm not opposed. Yeah, no. I, and I and I thought thirteen two was all right, but this this is just this did this did not need to happen. I'm I'm not. I'm personally I'm not opposed to thirteen. I just like I wish like some things were better. But it's yeah. I, I, it's just hearing that the the last game they decided to go with. I guess they are trying their best to pull in people before they ended. I guess I, I don't mean, know. I don't, but who does this serve though? I, I really wonder. don't hate it. I just would have been perfectly fine not playing it. I would have been perfectly fine if they ended the story in 32 yeah, without <laughs> ending on a really weird clip. Where lightning's a god. Yeah. It's just... <laughs> yeah, that's a god. That only gets like 10 minutes of time. There's like all these religious undertones, but I can't tell if it's for religion or against, because it's... <laughs> It's just so weird. Everything or or against, are you for or against? 
Do you like our God or do you yeah, hate our God? That's pretty much what it is. It's do, not, you, do you want to save God or do you want to no, kill I have, God? No, I haven't, I haven't played Lightning Returns yet, but this is almost making me morbidly curious. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> there you go. That's why I want to play it. So, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, weird. I want to play it. I'm sure, we'll talk about it. I'm sure we'll talk about it more next month. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's like, I think David might have beaten it by then. Who knows? But um, Adam, I, I, I we'll started have it, and then hopefully we can get Aaron on Maybe. the podcast and talk about thirteen in general. Because my God, <laughs> yeah. Other than that, well, going um, back, uh, we sidetracked Adam. But yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I reviewed Tales of Symphonia. It's, okay, I, I don't yeah, want to dwell. On, I don't want to dwell on this too much. Tales of Symphonia was my first Tales game I played. You know, ten years back, and it seems to be a lot of people's yeah. first Tales game. Yeah, but, I was Legendia. That was yeah. hard. Symphonia was like the first, like real it the, one that was. It was the first streamish. Well, it was. It was. Uh, it kind of came out with a bit of fanfare, you know, on yeah. the GameCube. It sold really well on the GameCube, actually. Yeah, yeah. it's 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 still the best selling in the West, I believe. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, Zillia did well though. Yeah, but yeah. like, um, I, think, I mean, I have a lot of nostalgia for it, and that probably blinds me a little. Uh, my review, I kind of criticized it because the port is very, very, very lazily done. Um, they, it, they basically took the PS2 version of it, which came out in Japan shortly after the GameCube version, uh, and they never came here. Yeah, never came. And uh, basically, they just translated some new things and upresed it, and that's about it. Um, and the but that wasn't good I, enough. That wasn't good enough. So they no, added there, one more. <laughs> did, did they change the voices? By the no. way. No, oh, well, here's, here's, here's what they did. They added new costumes just basically on other Tales games, which, to be honest, they look kind of weird at times because <laughs> you're taking, like, the Zillia style, for instance, and putting it in, like, the more chibi Symphonia style. <laughs> why, is, why is Kratos wearing Ludger's uh, yeah. outfit, LOL? But anyways, uh, anyways um, what was I saying? Uh, there are a lot of localization issues. Or, let me first of all talk about the game in general. The battle system was, I believe, their first foray into 3D, uh, yeah. but it's, it's still, yeah. it's still yeah. very 2D reminiscent of the old, of the uh, earlier games like uh, like Fantasia. It, it's so like, you can, it's so you can like move line thing going. Yeah, it's, on. You, you, it's it's effectively 3D because you can move towards and away from an enemy, and then you can change it to another enemy uh, who you know is in a different plane. Yeah. So there's no it's all the same. It's, it's on the same plane, just different axis. Well, you know, yes, different axis. That's. Um, so it's 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 basically like a 2D game in a 3D battlefield. So it's and it's it's a very foundational battle system. It's clear that they basically expanded from this for Abyss and for Zilla and for Vesperia. Um, so it is a little bit tricky to go back to um, because you know I, I mean just in the first hour I tried like free running like five times and like, oh yeah I can't do that. <laughs> no, oh, can't be done. Sorry. I forgot. Oh yeah, you know what you're playing. You know, trying to avoid an attack or whatever. But anyways, uh, I, I think there is some appeal in just its simplicity. Uh, it's not a very intricate system, but it, it also leaves it to you're, you're not really thinking about a whole lot when you're playing. It's mostly just uh, attacking or defending. It's, you're, there's not much in terms of, like, your positioning. I mean, it's just really a 2D plane. But, so it's, it's a pretty basic game, uh, but I still think it's enjoyable in its simplicity. Um, but the port, uh, uh, this localization effort, um, there are some lines that are misplaced, uh, I actually haven't gotten to this part yet in the game. I've, I've basically, in the game, I've gotten up to the end of it, the first game, but I haven't beaten it yet. Uh, but there are some lines that are misplaced, uh, where the, the spoken line will be different from the written, uh. Oh, attack. I don't like that. Yeah, it's like in movies when they yeah, do that. It's... But also, like, uh, there are things, like, for example, there are, there, just like the rest of the Tales games, there are titles, um, where you can unlock for doing, like, a side quest. So I did a side quest for Lloyd. Uh, and I said I unlocked a title for Colette, which you get like, what? you get a title like 30 hours later, uh, or something like that. It was like the, it was like the wrong notification, uh, in the game. It said like you unlocked, to be specific, it said I unlocked Colette's dog lover title, which you get by talking to all the dogs in the game. But I got don't that, get ti- there. yeah, but I got that title early on by doing a mini game related to, uh, related to Lloyd, unrelated to this dog thing. So it was just like, it was misplaced in the game, that's and then weird. whenever I wonder if that's a problem of the localization or it's a problem of the PlayStation Two. I'm not version. sure. No, so. no. Well, it, it was it was it was a new uh, mini game, but anyways, there's also like when you oh. steal like when you steal items from an enemy, like it'll it, instead of saying in, in the GameCube version, I know it said stole and then whatever the item is, but now it yeah. says like whatever the item is stole and it's missing a, <laughs> it's missing a space. 
Uh, oh, no. <laughs> uh, I have a... Uh, so go store. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Oh, like, good. So, like... So there's formatting issues everywhere. Yeah, it's just like... Uh, that's, not, that's hilarious. I mean, that's, that's not like game-breaking. Like, I can ignore it. But it's just kind of like... You don't... None it's of, very... Uh, none of these sound game-breaking. They're just like... It's, yeah, it's been a while since I've Wait. seen, like, a game with such a poor, like... Like, tr- like, just, like, text boxes... Like, they're showing up at the wrong time, or, like, the words aren't properly spaced, and it's just like, wow, this is 2014, and we're running into these issues still? <laughs> I, I've got that with Atelier, too, is that the text actually goes outside the box. Oh, really? I've seen, so, yeah. It's it's part of it's, like, obviously, like, you don't need many Japanese characters to fit what I mean, American characters have. Like, English has to go. Much to effort. Like, just from they the were... fact that this only came out for the PS3 as well, like... Uh, yeah. Well, what, what do you what do you what do you want? Also, you want it on. I mean, it's the, it's it's also the difference in budget. I mean, Final Fantasy they had to remake the models and stuff like that. And this one, I'm sure the budget wasn't that big. Try Crescendo, who did the poor job, probably didn't get much, get much money because they're like, well, guys, we're making this news hysteria, so we can't put okay, much me, money here. Yeah, let me just talk a little bit more, just kind of finish up my thoughts on it. Uh, yeah. No, that's the problem. Like, I think Symphonia. And I, I'm really enjoying playing it again, even though, like, I only gave it a 7 out of 10. I think it's a pretty enjoyable game, uh, despite some issues. Um, one thing I think it does much better, and I, I mean much better than, like, the rest of the Tales series, are basically what you're doing outside of battle, uh, like the dungeon areas and the puzzles. Um, there's a lot of dungeon areas. There's probably more than a dozen of them. Um, and They're in these all dun- fun. They're yeah, clever, too. You, there's the, it's not just an open field like Zilla, and it's not just a linear path that you're just trying to get to the end. There's usually something to figure out, like how do I open this door? How do I get to that chest? Or, you know, how do I get up there? And, like the like, Shadow Temple one. That one was yeah, good. Shadow Temple is pretty good, except those little NPC guys are kind of annoying to get them to follow you properly. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, like, the, you know, I, like the ones that come to mind are like the Tetheala bases. You have to. Push. There are some. There is some block pushing to figure out how to activate different elevators, um, and how to get to different rooms. Um, and then there's like the Temple of Lightning, where you have to deal with these little lightning rods, and you have to switch them in certain orders to make sure you can access certain places. Yeah. Um, and there's just a, like compare that to like Graces, for example, where pretty much uh-huh. every dungeon was just like a set of paths that you just get your way to the end. There was a lot of backtracking. Yeah. Hey, hey, so. Or, or Exilia. Wall Fort existed. But granted, that dungeon sucked. So, I mean. well, or Exilia, which was mostly just wide open fields. The only place in Exilia, there's like this one like fortress area that okay. I thought was okay. Um, but the rest of it was just like these wide open fields that were pretty much just a battle arena. Like, okay, here are some fights to kind of waste your time between this story element and the next story element. So that's one thing that Symphonia, I think, really shines on are these little dungeon areas. Uh, again, like this out of battle thing, what you're actually thinking about as you're trying to get through these little areas. So uh, it's a little bit puzzly, and I, maybe some people don't like that, but I really do. It gives you something to think about rather than just, oh, fight this battle, fight this battle, get to the boss. Point, so. Yeah, it's, it's not just battling from point A to point B. You're doing other things. Yes. I mean, well. So. And of course, uh, and, I, and I love the music. I know some people love Legendia's the best, and it gets a lot of praise. Yeah. But I, Symphonia's, I prefer it. Now, music is a very subjective thing, of course. Uh, so. But yeah, I kind of, I mean, this is maybe a little bit too unrealistic, but I kind of wish they did more for the game's 10th anniversary other than this, like, kind of lazy, sloppy HD port. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, well, what else did they say they were going to do anything no, they else? Didn't, they didn't, this they didn't, I mean, they did the concert, didn't they, or something well, they didn't, like that? Uh, they didn't promise anything else. I just, like I said, maybe a little bit too, too, too unrealistic for me to expect them to do much more. I mean, they should... And this is, uh, some people get tripped up on this, but they, they also lowered the battle frame rate in half for this version, which to me well, was... for the PS2 version. Well, yeah. Which they uh, used, so I mean, so it sucks, yeah. I mean, I mean uh, it, it was especially obvious to me, considering that Abyss, Vesperia, Graces, and Jillia are all 60 frames per second, and now Wait, Abyss is, is not 60. Abyss isn't? Yeah, it Abyss is. On, no, on, on PS2 it is. On, 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 on 3DS it's 30. On PS2 it's 60. I'm pretty sure uh, the PS2 version is... Okay, well... I think it's only the 3DS version that's 60. Okay. But anyways, it was it was obvious. Um, and I think I've gotten used to it now, but it, it's a little bit disappointing that they that they couldn't, like, up you know enhance that, because we know they've hit 60 frames per second before on GameCube, so you'd think they'd be able to do it here. Uh, and, and, like, some of these localization errors, 
uh, perhaps they could could have voiced the skits in English or uh, you know other things. It's just it was. It seems like it's it's it's, it's once again it's probably down to price. right. Like it's, they weren't it's, probably it's, given it's, much money to do. It's stuff pretty like clear that, what yeah. they wanted to do is after they finished their Zilia, their Zilia duology, they wanted to go on to the next thing, but that was going to take a little bit of time. So they basically had Tri Crescendo, basically kind of put this out there quickly just to fill fill some time while they. Uh, you, you would think area. that's not like what a certain other company is doing while they're working on a, the next big mother line entry, too. Uh. I'm actually surprised that they opted to cr- do a, what's it called, do a 10th anniversary at all, considering like none of the other games ever get like their anniversary celebrated at all, instead of just creating a spin-off game. Well, Tales of, Re- Tales of Destiny got those remakes, but that was like lots of... Yeah, that was Namco, not back, Namco back then is not the same as Namco now, so... I mean, yeah. Well, now it's Namco Bandai, or Bandai Nesca. Yeah, Bam- I mean, I'm sorry, sorry Bamco, Bamco now is not the same thing as Bamco back then. Um, but yeah. yeah, I'm just surprised that they didn't opt to make another spin-off game. Maybe it's because the market isn't viable for a spin-off game right now. I mean, granted... They have spin-offs. I don't, not I don't know, because Symphonia 8, the remastered, sold sort of like crap in Japan. Tales of the Radiant, Mythology, Mythology whatever. I, mean, I don't Tales know. Of like, World. I don't think... They, they put out a Tales fighting game. I mean, I think I think the game is just... I don't know how this is going to sell in the state side, but I know in Japan this sold, oh, it sold, is, did sure not sold. sell very well at all. It's, Tales of Symphonia did better here than did yes. in Japan anyway. Yeah. yeah, it did. A lot better here. It's like Vesperia. It did a lot better here yeah. than it did The Collector's there. Edition is badass, though. It's very well... Yeah, it's sitting over there. I got yeah, it. It's, it's very nice. well packaged. It um, was actually sort of... Just props to the Namco. Is it better than your Exilia one? I never got the Exilia one. I was never interested in the Exilia oh. one. But I would say this is hands down one of the best collector's editions I've ever ever gotten. It's a cube. It's beautiful. It's well done. <laughs> but like, so like we talked a lot about the original Symphonia, but what about like Dawn of the New World? Dawn of the New World, I've only played a little bit of. Um, in terms of its gameplay, like is actually much better than Symphonia. And I know Dawn of the New World gets a lot of criticism. But in terms of like your actual battle gameplay, it's a lot like Abyss, really. Uh, oh. And like you have a full 3D plane, it's a lot faster, and there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of uh, abilities that you can mix and match with your characters. I guess the downside are is is that there's really only two characters that you can work with, rather than you know the typical six or eight. Um, so, you know, maybe a little bit more limited there. And there's this party monster mechanic uh, that you basically. Uh, half your party is always filled, or mostly always filled, with these monster characters that you can't actually control. Um, that you kind of do you level them up? Is it like you, uh, you evolve them and stuff? Yeah. You, oh you man! Give them items, you give like them that. items, and they depending on what you give them, they can they can oh, change form. Cool. They can evolve like a Pokemon. Uh, oh. Now, some people, you know, that that right away is like a turnoff. Like, what? I don't want monsters. I want characters that are believable. And I want play Lloyd. Damn it. Yeah. yeah, and the, the the Symphonia characters come back. Um, in, they're locked. In, in, in English, they're not voiced by the same people. Or at least most of them aren't. So I guess that's a continuity thing. Luckily, the, there's that, the that Japanese was a voice union thing. Yeah, Ish, union issue. Yep. Luckily, the Japanese voice track is there, and that's consistent. So that's that's an appealing aspect of that. Um, but also, um, the the characters you get them. I, I don't remember if you can change their equipment, but I know they're like coming at a set level, and that doesn't change. And yeah. usually it's actually a little bit on the low side. So using ca- the Symphonia characters in your party can actually be like big things. Well, at the end, but when they yeah. come in at various points in the story, and their their levels are a little bit on the low side, which actually kind of makes battles almost harder to use them rather than just use your monsters. <laughs> uh, so like that's dumb. Yeah, like at the very end of the game, especially like you can be going through the final dungeon, and your characters might be around like level seventy with your monsters, and like you have these Symphonia guys at fifty. Okay, like, yeah, you can use them if you want. They're just gonna make <laughs> things a lot harder. Yeah, and you can't make them party leaders either. So you actually yeah. have to switch them every single time you enter into battle. So they are playable though. So you can. Can you leave them out? Yeah, yeah. Things? Like, the whole point can, is to use the monsters. Yeah. Like, the monster system is actually pretty cool. It's just... It's just... It's the... It's the char- oh, the characters not interesting enough compared to Symphonia. Is that the big issue there? Well, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I tend to like monster systems more than most people, I think, so I enjoyed it. Um, I, like yeah. I, I do think... I just mean, like, the, the main talking characters... About, talking about the, the narrative story. and the story, I think it is... Cert- I yeah. think Symphonia's narrative is... Uh, extremely safe is what I would put it. There's nothing, like, wow. awful about it. There's no, like, odd, like, character motivations or twists. Uh, I don't think there's anything, like, that's absolutely terrible. Say, like, in Graces, like, some of those mo- motivations and some of those plot points just 
to be honest, I thought were really kind of stupid um, and unbelievable. I think Symphonia is extremely safe in that regard, but I think, you know, it's consistent. Character motivations are believable. It's fairly cohesive despite its length. Um, so I think it does its job all right, although it's extremely by the numbers. Symphonia 2, I think, tries to get a little bit too complex, and then some of the elements are just like, uh, silly in the sequel, and it, it kind of it definitely feels like a, almost like a direct to DVD sequel in terms of yeah. where the plot goes. And the main character is, um, is extremely. He starts off kind of like uh, he's unconfident and whiny, and while he does improve a little bit, I think it takes way too long. He's spending hours with like this kid who is just uh, kind of a. I don't want to do this. I don't want. Yeah, wanna... he's well, he's ex- he, that's exactly right. He's very whiny and just like. It's hard to. It just takes way too long for him to go anywhere. And it's not like it's like a bit it's, where it's it's won't shut up about. Oh, yeah, the, it's got one of the most awkward romances ever. God, it's so bad. <laughs> I hate Marta. It just makes it worse because she's voice. The Japanese voice makes it worse. Like I don't. She's Laura Bailey in English. I know Laura Bailey in English. That also makes it worse. I can't decide which one's worse. Like they're both. They're both terrible. Jesus. Basically, with, this isn't a spoiler because it happens early on in that game, but she basically is infatuated with Emil because she thinks Emil saved him or saved her uh, like a, a long time back. So she she's kind of infatuated with him, uh, even though he's just a, a whiny punk. <laughs> so oh, it's, man, it's, it's so I, 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 the story I think myself. goes from like this safe but comfortable comfort food story in Symphonia to like this just kind of annoying. Oh, and also. And, <laughs> uh, I will say I will say that the the villain character in Symphonia 2, I'm dead serious when I say this, is probably my favorite in the entire series. Uh, I think he's one of the most unique and interesting and non-cliche villains out there. Uh, really? Wow. I, I really like him. I mean, but granted, I think the rest of the Tales villains suck balls, so... I think my favorite villain is Van, but okay. Van? Eh. Yeah, I like I liked Van a lot. He's a lot better. Spoiler. Technically. Spoiler for a ten-year-old or yeah, you're, yeah, no, I know. I'm just I'm kidding. Uh, I don't know like how RPGs no matter how old they are. So obvious that he's a bad guy. Eh, is it? Well, we won't I say why. I don't remember. <laughs> but I was like, uh, again, I know RPG could be from the '80s. I hate it's spoilers, better. It's so. better than but, Grace's is bad. So I, in the end, I think I'm, I'm enjoying going. To, I, I enjoy yeah, going to Symphonia again, even though it's pretty clear that they. Uh, that the, ge- the gameplay is, was their early entry into 3D, so it's a little bit dated. But yeah, just like Legendia was kind of dated I mean, too. Legendia was actually, like you go back and play Legendia. Like Legendia was actually 2D, just like the old games. And, yeah, and some, yeah, it's it, that's true. It was flat. It was you. All you did was kick. It was, it was all you did. Like the backflips and kicks. Legendia was also a bad game. <laughs> I liked Legendia yeah, quite a bit. Legendia. It was actually the first it was the first Tales game I beat. I've only beaten Legendia and Grace's F, to be honest, but I liked the, I, the music was so good in Legendia that it helped me well, carry through. Know. So, uh, I will say like Symphonia is like not the, Symphonia is definitely not the big hitter of the year for both Japan nah, and, no, and it's, in US. It's just kind of a nice like re-release, and yeah. I, I think it's actually it's, no remastered should be labeled as game of the year. To be honest, I don't think no. that should be. Uh, let me just say that. Uh, well, it, it, it's nice that they have it on PSN actually for twenty bucks if you just want to play the first Symphonia game. I think that's a yeah, very appropriate bucks. price. No, they it's twenty bucks. They really two zero. Uh, they, I don't think they officially announced this, which is kind of odd. But you can get just the Symphonia games separately on PSN for twenty dollars. Which, to be honest, yeah. I think it's okay. That's a pretty acceptable price, you know. Just Especially if you consider how long Symphonia is. Symphonia is really long. Yeah, twenty bucks for an RPG like that—that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Either one, really. It's that is an RPG for twenty bucks is like a good good buy, you know. <clears throat> but that's just me. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's so, the it, I think for about the, for the RPGs that came out this month, and then there's several more next yeah. month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two specifically big ones, actually. There's the- yeah, I mean, you had some other titles that came out too, but honestly, that's that. Those are the big heavy hitters, and then you know, uh, March looking huge. I mean, you got South Park, you got. Uh, Atelier, as I mentioned before, it's coming out this Dark month. Dark Souls. Uh, what else? Dark Souls Two, yeah, of course. I'm, I'll, I'm sorry. <laughs> if I disappear from the face of the world, it is because I'm playing Dark Souls. So you're next ten out of ten. Um, wow. And then <laughs> you're so. I never even gave. Uh, I never gave the first one a ten out of ten. Are you kidding me? Doesn't mean you won't give this one. I, I will be reviewing it for this site. Uh, so 
I mean, look forward to that. I'll also be, it'll also be a video, the second video review we put out, so. Well, what else so we have out? a couple other video reviews. Final Fantasy X is coming out in March, yeah, mm-hmm. 10, 10, 10, 10, Oh, yeah, that one's Ooh. coming out. Yeah. I, I'm getting, I'm going to get a shitty game, game, but yeah, it's coming I'm out. I'm going to play it on my PS3, I'm going to play my Vita. If you want to talk about bad games, but anyway. And then Diablo I, I, Three First Souls is also coming out. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the expansion pack gonna add a lot of new content for that. So. No, well, a lot of the new. Well, I mean, uh, let's let's also touch the fact that there were some other big localization announcements in February as well during Nisa's conference when they also announced uh, D- Duncan Ropa too. They yeah. also announced that the Sky Four Promise Revisited is coming out, the Vita ver- port, which adds a lot of new content, including new characters. Like they have characters from like anime making an appearance. Like they have Malo from Spice and Wolf making an appearance. It's like, a lot of that stuff's coming in, and then you got Fairy Fencer F, um, the title, well, Yoshitaka Amano did the art, uh, excuse me, the concept art, Nobura Amato did the uh, soundtrack. Which is really weird, because this is a B-grade yeah. title, but, you know. To be, Amato did the soundtrack for Neptunia, so it's not too weird. He did the, all, all the music okay. for that. His, all his right, Neptunia Papa's. soundtrack is pretty good. Uh, it's pretty good, yeah. Even bad. if they use a lot of the same it's, tracks, it's, it's, right. it's, it's, you remember it. Uh, Battle Princess of Arcadia's, which is amazing that that came that, out. That I was one, so I don't think away. anyone was expecting. <laughs> no, I thought it was like that. I was really, I I was was really amazed by the art. I was like really looking forward to it. And I was like, that's never going to get localized. And it, it kind of threw me off that they, they did that. And so. And then. And then. Yes. Moving Soul Z. And then last and week, uh, everyone expected, but yeah. last week Atlas Hutton announced Persona Q and Persona 5, as well as the other Persona games coming as well. Yep. Yeah. It's yeah, like you you were thinking like and, and, and you know, Persona Q is coming out this fall. Yeah. So that's like a few months that's after part, well that's coming out this year. Yeah, I'm, Alice Alice has been pretty good with the uh like for, with Shinigami Tensei last year only had a couple month turnaround and Persona Q seems to be similar. It comes out in like June in Japan and fall. I was I was talking about the guy who was on the localization team for Shinigami Tensei four last year at E three and he was talking about how it was it was a lot of it side by side. Like the persona, the people in Japan would be working on something, and then they would send it to the localization yeah. team uh, in America to translate and, of course, update for American audiences. So it's that kind of side by side work. You know that Persona Five is going to get a pretty quick turnaround Hopefully. as well. It was announced. I, I still think yeah. it's coming out. In Japan. I, think, I still think it's going to come out in Japan next year. Well, yeah, they 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 originally announced Persona Five for 2014 in Japan. Winter. They said. Winter? Or win- yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, winter, 20, winter, 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 quote, that leaves them, uh, that leaves them some room in where they actually place it. It's January! Persona 5 in the U.S. was specified 2015. Yeah, which so, no one, no one should be surprised that yeah. that is the date. Um, and some people seem know. to, some, some seem to be a little bit upset at that because it's a PlayStation 3 game coming out two years after the... It's so That's when Persona dumb. 4 happened. Yeah, like, uh, did, did, did Persona, Persona 4 coming just... out on PS2, like... 2008, late 2008, and that was two years after. Yeah, you know, that was I, three years into the generation. Now people this will have coming out <clears throat> PlayStation 3. Now people will have the right to bitch if this is not 60 FPS. <sighs> like I kid you not, if this is, it's not even a game that would benefit. I, I'm something. just saying. I'm Who saying. Like, I, I actually think it would the be smarter. I actually think it would be smarter if they made this cross gen. Like at this point, at this point. Just no, it's way too big a project. I either make it question, or what they're going to do is they're going to make a director's director's guy who follow Namco. That, that I can understand. Persona, 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 Persona I, Five, I would, I would Golden or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> for Vita. That I could see like a Vita version. Vita is like, still alive. It's so going here. from PS3 to PS4 is such a different beast. Like it's totally different hardware, totally different processor, totally different graphics card. Everything inside of it's totally different. Yep. It's I'd be very. I mean, obviously they make the game on the PC before they put it I out, but it's like. Make this, uh, make it, a, make a port a year later. Add some stuff onto it. Make it 1080p, 60 FPS, whatever crap garbage mm-hmm. they can do. God, I just, <laughs> I hate that. Like RPGs, like no one should ever bring up 30 and 60 frames per second in yeah, RPG. It's not, really, it's, really, it's, Adam, it's, the 60 so, and 30 FPS matter in Symphonia. In Tales, Symphonia yes. is an action RPG. Persona would be turn based. <laughs> Okay, well, it's just, it's just, it's just, okay, so, action, action okay, RPGs so. require snappy movements and all that stuff, and right. and reaction. I, know, I, know. I was being smart, Alex. Sorry. It's it's like it, it's it's when it's like single player. It's just like I don't. I, I hate those conversations. Like it's the whole. 
Like I don't just, care. Just to go back, just to go back on that, I don't think it was. I don't think it's game breaking for Symphonia, but it's definitely disappointing considering it was 60 FPS on one console before already. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. It's, well, I mean, obviously it's the smoothness compared to it, but at the same time, it's like when it, when it's a new game, when you have something compared to, I can understand it, but when it's like a new game, I just man, it's like your your eye just does not notice. After so long, like the difference at, at some point, so it's like I, don't I know. still think Persona Five is not going to be a very great game, but we don't know anything do about it. I th- <laughs> what are you coming from? It's like all Persona Four was a great yeah. game. Persona Four was a great just, game. I love I, Persona Four. Even, even Mister Fucking, I gave it a ten out of ten. Like Persona Four to me. Even, I, even when, even in a genre that they had no idea what they were doing, they made a pretty good game. The team. What are you talking about, Catherine? I think it's yeah, like, if, if anything, you, you know it's going to be at least decent. Like, I, I, yeah, I would be yeah, surprised. It's, it'll probably be... It's, it's going to be about I, Abraham Lincoln and slavery. I will say, that, that, I will say that if it uses the same... Like, if it plays... If the combat system plays pretty much the same way as it did Persona 4, I will fucking hate this game. What? No, it's going to be Catherine, too. You're going to be going up on a wall of... Yeah, would you rather have that? What, what's wrong with Jess turn? RPGs have changed over the past... Let me just say this. Uh, like, since Shin Megami Tensei 4 slightly changed the press turn system, and I don't think they did it for the better. Some of those, that smirk system just seemed unnecessary, and I, I kind of wish they stuck with like what, what Shin Megami Tensei yeah. 3 had. Is so, it the same team? I guess, is it the same team? I it's not the Persona so. team. If that's no, it's not the Persona team. Yeah. It's the other Atlas team. If, I, don't, I don't know the specifics yeah. of their teams. but uh. I would say that I've been disappointed in the Shin Megami Tensei series. I've been, okay. I've been pretty cool with get the Persona out. series. You, you, get, you get your ass. I just don't. It's, I fall asleep playing Doctor. Oh my so gosh! Like, I, why? I fell asleep playing Doctor, and it was Digital Devil Saga. I had a hard time getting I, into I, as well. But I'll play those games. I have it on my shelf. I'll I, go I back. I think the Shin Megami Tensei games can be kind of a bummer to play. I mean, it's got such a. It's the thing. It's like that's why oh, I've like been more into. It's got such an I, oppressive atmosphere. Oh, yeah, that's what's so great about this, that. This is, this is my argument for why I've been more into Moe and stuff like that. It's because life is just depressing enough. I want to go home. I want to play something more upbeat. I, I can get into Neptunia. I can get up to some of these other games. I have a hard time getting to a game that's. I mean, I, I can get into stuff. It's like anime. It's like I cannot. I have a harder time getting into stuff that's more darker and more you depressing. Might have trouble than it's Rumpa, something more I don't think it's all that depressing. I think I think Fallout Three is. More Persona Four's got its moments, but I'm like it's more poppy. Yeah, Persona Four is more lighthearted, which I, I think don't it's, it's more upbeat. Like, dark stuff, I have to be in a very specific mood. Yeah, yeah I gotta be in the mood, and sometimes it's like, I don't know. Yeah, like, Persona 4 just consumed me, regardless of what mood I was in. That's true. It's because it's got all kinds of different flavors. And that's the kind of thing with Shin Megami Tensei 4. It's like, it's sitting up there, and that's my next game to play. It's At the same time, it's like, I don't know if I'm in the mood for it. Like, it's that downbeat mood that I don't know if I can uh, take right now. So, yeah, life's depressing. Hey. Something up beat you. Know? Yeah. Life sucks. But we'll see. Shin Megami Tensei, I can play it on my phone soon, so we'll see. Oh, yeah, that's going to be cool. Yeah, yeah. I'd buy it if I need the Android. It's eight bucks. That's not bad. Yeah, it needs to be on Android because I don't have an iPhone, but that's the problem with like, all these RPGs coming off of iOS. Tactics is still not on Android, yeah, so that that's sucks. Impressive. What, the first one? Yeah, what? the best it was version. Announced? Final Fantasy Tactics is not on the Android. Yeah. It was announced Android. for Android, still. right? And they just kind of dropped it. <laughs> it was like, yeah. uh, so yeah. how they announced well, SNC4 for the Europe, and they just sort of just dropped it. Yeah, yeah it's, that's the biggest bummer, like, you got to feel for those guys, because Atlas USA is the one to announce Persona 5 and Persona Q for the West, but it's only America. Yeah. They haven't announced anything for Europe yet. So I really feel bad for those guys. Like, I the hope, like Sega. beyond hope, that... Issa's helping or something, or Sega. But, you know, Sega's, who knows. But, but this was way before Sega that that was happening, so uh, it's yeah, not like it's public, Sega. Publishing still doesn't matter, right? But Sega's got a huge European presence, though, like Relic and stuff like that. They exactly. They have a lot of people. Exactly. Go get them, Sega Sammy. Please, help out our guys, because um, it sucks that region locking's still a thing. That's bullshit. It should go away, because people are still paying money for those things. So it doesn't matter. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and wrap things up. Uh, like we said, March is a big month. Final Fantasy X is coming out. 10, 10, 10 HD. Dark Souls 2. You have reviews for those games. Atelier, we'll have a review for. A um, lot of video content coming soon, too. I mean, Justin's been pumping them out. He just put out a One Piece review today, so check that out. Um, and we'll have some more stuff coming soon. A lot more Let's Plays and things like that. So 
with that, uh, thank you, thanks a lot, guys, for showing up today. Thank you, David. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Simon. No hey, you're not welcome. You, I hope you miss out next time. No, why would you do that to me? I hope you go to a party or oh something. <laughs> just, just leave hey, a I didn't drop many here. F-bombs like I wanted to. No, that's fine. I I'll do it. I'll do it at the stuff. end. That's fine. All right. Great. I'll cut that. That's great. <laughs> well, this, this is for the kids, okay? Uh, Mid-sentence. So, thanks a lot for joining us on this month's episode of the TetraCast, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Fuck. <laughs>